Okay, we are back for the PT version of these tests. Um, we have previously had a PTT um, test done on the two patients that you see in the background. Um, what I did was I had made uh, the PT reagent uh, that does have calcium chloride already in it, and um, I discarded the calcium chloride that was preheated in the previous video um, and am now replacing that with the PT reagent because in this one, the PT reagent does have to be preheated. So when you do your testing uh, in class or if you're using this analyzer, uh, make sure that you realize that, you know, you can't, unless you have a heat block, uh, which would be great because then you could just put it in the heat block, like for um, if you wanted to do the patient's PT, PTT at the same time. Okay, so we're using the little cuvette just like we did in the other video. The video I'm referring to is the PTT video, and we're going to perform the PT on both of these patients. So we have patient 8 and 15. So PT 8. And PT15. I wanted to clarify something that uh, I said in, a, in the previous video. With the glass tube that's in the inside here, the silica in the glass makes it so that it has a longer recalcifying time, the plasma does. Uh, and that's why it's used. There are tests out there and studies that you can research if you would like in order to uh, further understand that a little bit more. Okay, with the PT, we're going to use still 100 uh, microliters of patient. So I will put that into both of them. So we have patient eight. is going in there and then patient 15 is going in the other one and the difference between uh, these two tests obviously are the um, size of the clotting cascades that are being analyzed uh, but also the anticoagulant therapy and the reagent that we use and the amount of reagent that we use. Okay, so um, the PT reagent is being pre-warmed in the back. The two patient reagents are being warmed here. Uh, so what we can do is uh, set, go back to our test menu. We want to do PT, so we'll use um, the clock face looking button. It's going to give us that countdown again. And when we add our patient, or sorry, our reagent plasma, oh, I'm using the wrong one. We need to use 200 um, microliters. So I'm adjusting my pipette to get all the way to 200. This is a 20 to 200 microliter one. So I have to hurry up. All right, so we can still use the same kind of tips. Remember, when we get to this, we need to hit the power looking button. Okay, when it gets down to zero, all those beeps are just to tell us what time it is. When it gets down to zero, we have to press that. Then we're gonna pull some region out, okay? It's okay that that has happened. We'll pull it back in there. All right, as soon as I add the PT reagent, I'm gonna hit this hand. Here we go. And that's because it's got the calcium chloride in the PT reagent. And that starts, that initiates the clotting cascade. So the ball, the ball is still moving. 
I'm expecting this to be high too because again as we saw in the PTT video um, these are old specimens they've been frozen for a while oh look at that okay then so that's actually not that bad so that's um, rather close to normal haha <laughs> so good for us all right so we had uh, a 29.3 on this patient and we had a 62 something um, for the PTT so go ahead and try to figure out what's going on there I'm not going to interpret the results for you because um, if that's the case then you know we might end up having <laughs> we might end up having some classroom issues because uh, we might do a quiz or something on this on this video all right so um, let's let's start the other one so we'll put the PT uh, patient 15 in. we're gonna go back to the test menu we're gonna press that button again to put us back to PT and it's gonna start counting down all right and I'm going to get this PT reagent up into my pipette I did change the pipette tip. Um, I couldn't remember if I actually touched it to the patients uh, well or not, so I just changed it. So again, when we get to where it starts beeping and counting down and hit zero, we're going to hit the power looking button. And uh, that just uh, tells the instrument that we're ready and that we're going to put the reagent in okay that's all that it means it means nothing else other than that and then um, if we don't press it in time then it thinks we've stepped away and it screams okay so when we get to zero we have to press it within four seconds we're going to add that and hit and there we go we didn't exceed time that time. Go us. Woohoo. All right. Let's check this out. Where's the ball? There it is. This one might be around the same, too. Nope. So it does mean um, different stuff as opposed, um, there are different clinical significance uh, to a patient that has a prolonged PTT but not a prolonged PT. Um, and I'm not going to explain, like I said, I'm not going to explain that in this video because I would want to have that cascade with me um, and talk about it that way. So, hey, not too bad. Okay. So, uh, that one, it looked like was 57 seconds, 57.2. All right. So that is increased. The, the critical for a PT is 85 seconds. All right. So if it was greater than 85, that would be a critical. Neither one of these had a critical PT and only one of them had a critical PTT. Okay. So um, I will catch you in another video and hopefully we'll get to talking about um, the clotting cascade and how that works with the uh, results that we just had. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe and thank you so much for your support. I'll see you next time. Bye.